It's always tough to know what to say after games like that, where essentially I knew that's exactly what was going to happen, and then that's exactly what happened. I will start with where I started for my prediction on Friday, which is this would be the real indicator of where we are, because Brighton were going to play Arsenal, and we were going to play Liverpool. So we could get that sort of comparison as to how we're faring compared to the other teams that we're supposed to be competing with. And Arsenal with 10 men have held out against the Brighton side that scored against our 11. And then today, Liverpool have picked us off as expected. So, you know, the only thing I got wrong, as it were, is that I did 2-0 to Liverpool and it ended up being 3-0. But I said in my reaction to the Brighton game that we don't create enough significant chances and I wasn't sure how we were going to score. And I said that Liverpool would overrun our midfield and when they did that, with the quality they've got available to them, they will score goals and they've done that. I mean, if you actually look at the stats from this football match, Onan has made zero saves in this game and Alisson's made three. So... On the actual balance of chances, we've created the same number of goal-scoring opportunities. All right, Soberschlei created that one extra one where he decides to be really cocky and he should have just put the ball in the back of the net. So if you want to put it on a balance of that, then OK, you can have it as four to three in Liverpool's favour. But all three of Liverpool's goals were created by Manchester United mistakes. Yes, Liverpool still have to take the chances. I'm not going to take anything away from how Liverpool took those chances. They were absolutely clinical and... They were set up in a way to enable those chances to be created. So you do have to still give the credit to Liverpool for creating those mistakes and then capitalising on them when they came. But if I could sit here last week and tell you that that was going to happen, then Arna Slot could sit in front of his Liverpool team and tell his players, this is what we're going to do to create these situations and this is how we're going to win the game. And Eric Ten Hag can look at that Brighton game and go... If we do what we did last week against a team as good as Liverpool, we're going to lose quite heavily. And that's exactly what's happened. Like, Casemiro is going to get a lot of the blame. And I'm not going to take away from Casemiro's mistakes. But Eric Ten Hag has to be the most culpable for today's performance because those mistakes have come from his tactics. Right When we get the ball at the back in the first half, when it was Casemiro sitting and Bruno and Manu going forward, Casemiro would receive the ball in between the two centre-backs. Masraoui and Dallo would push up forward and Liverpool would leave their front four. So you've got Salah, Jota, Diaz and Sobersloy in a line of four up against De Ligt, Casemiro and Martinez. That is a 4v3 situation every single time we got the ball in our defensive area of the pitch in that first half. Now, that is a recipe for disaster. Yes, if we've got the best ball playing defenders in the world, then we'd be able to get around that. We don't have the best ball playing defenders in the world. We have players that were world class in the likes of Casemiro when they were playing at Real Madrid when, let's be honest... He was not put under pressure in those areas of the pitch when he was playing for Real Madrid because in La Liga, Real Madrid, everyone puts a low block in against them. So he's not used to having to deal with that. And, you know, as I said, it's a bad pass from Casemiro, but you're asking for it. You're absolutely asking for it the way that you're playing. If you're going to allow Liverpool to have a row of four players closing down your three defenders... You've got to go long or you've got to play some of the best outfield ground passes I've ever seen. And ultimately, Casemiro gives that ball away and it's 4v2. There is no time. I mean, I saw someone at half time. I can't remember if it was Keane or Sturridge having a go at Masraoui for not getting back quickly enough on Diaz. Like, again, the mistake is him going forward. Not that he can't get back, but he's been told to get forward because that's the tactics. And we're backing our players to actually get over that line of four and it's not working. So... What do we do five minutes later? We try the same thing again. Casemiro gets on the ball. The back four starts, well, sorry, the, the wing backs, as it were, start pushing up forward. Casemiro gets caught from behind. The ball gets turned over. We do get back into our shape. And I will say that because we did get back into our shape on the second one. But again, the tracking of runs is not very good. It's a world-class pass on the outside of the boot from Mohamed Salah into Luis Diaz. And he finds the back of the net again. And it's 2-0. 
From that point, Casemiro's head had completely gone. He tried to do some sort of like Berbatov spin in his own half and just went out of play. He played that side foot pass with the 1-2 to Masraoui where he put it out for a throw in. It was obvious that Casemiro's head had gone and rightfully so he was taken off at half time. Toby Collier comes on and the tactics are slightly changed. In the second half, rather than having Casemiro drop in between Martinez and De Ligt, Collier and Mainu were both dropping in short to try and get on the ball in those areas. So now, rather than a 3v4, you've now got a 2-2 against 4. But Masraoui and Dallo are still pushing forward. So what happens is, Mainu gets in on the ball, Collier gets on the ball, and all of a sudden, those two, either side, are swarming in around Collier and Mainu. Masraoui and Dallo are too far forward. De Ligt and Martinez are immediately under pressure if they play it back to them. And Bruno, Ahmad, Rashford, Garnacho, Zerxa, whoever you want, are not providing significant support. So you're literally isolating a 19-year-old Kobe Mainu and a 20-year-old Toby Collier to a Liverpool press that is absolutely all over us. So is it any surprise that Mainu got caught on the ball and then they created another chance and Salah scores again? Of course it's not. Because we've not learned. We have not learned. We've not taken our medicine and significantly adjusted at half-time. And that's on the manager. Furthermore, he then at 3-0 decides to bring Ahmad on, who, by the way, was our best player today. And there is no shadow of a doubt about that. The best Manchester United performance today was from Diogo Dallo. Diogo Dallo. Ahmad Diallo, should I say. Because in those 25 minutes, he actually got on the ball and tried to create something. Because, shock horror, Garnacho is not a right winger. He's a left winger. And Marcus Rashford shouldn't have started the game. And the boos around Old Trafford when Garnacho got substituted because every single person in that ground knew that Rashford wasn't the one to stay on the pitch. You needed to put Garnacho on the left-hand side and bring Ahmad on. All right, it was already 3-0. I'm not saying from that position, just bringing Ahmad on and moving Garnacho onto the other side gets us back into the game. But we all saw the performances of Rashford in those first two games. We all saw the performances of Garnacho off the bench in those two games. And we certainly saw how good Ahmad was in those first two games. And he's gone for Garnacho and Rashford. And it makes no sense. And then he takes Garnacho off to bring Ahmad on. And it makes no sense. So rightfully, the crowd are booing. And that's why the title of this video, or the thumbnail of this video, is Eric Ten Hag is sacking himself. Because he's got nowhere to hide. Everything he's doing is not working. He's stuck with Casemiro and Maynard in midfield. That's not worked. He's stuck with Rashford. That's not worked. He's taken Garnacho off. That's not worked. He's playing Joshua Zerxa, but he's not playing him up front. He's not getting in the box, albeit he got there in the second half, and we'll get to that shortly. But that was his big money attacking signing. So far, he's got one arguably lucky goal, and he's cancelled out a Garnacho goal, and he's missed two sitters. So that's not worked. He's brought De Ligt in. I thought De Ligt did all right today. He put in that one heavy challenge on Luis Diaz, but I don't think he can be faulted for the efforts that he had defensively. His passing was certainly all right, but on the goals, he's outnumbered. Matthias De Ligt can't do anything about it when it's 4v3 or 4v2. What's he supposed to do? And what does Den Haag do? The moment he makes a bad foul on Luis Diaz and gets a yellow card, he subs him off for Harry Maguire, almost admitting that De Ligt's not worked. I'm not going to go on about the old Ugart thing because... I know a lot of people are very disappointed Ugart wasn't available for this game, but apparently there was some drama surrounding PSG not allowing the paperwork to go through on time because they were still being a bit salty about not getting Sancho or not getting Rashford and us having to now get him for less because they wanted to get rid of him, but they weren't willing to... Whatever. You can make arguments till the cows come home about whose fault it is that Ugart wasn't signed in time. But I don't think signing Ugart would have made that much of a difference today. I'm not going to pin it on that. I'm pinning it on the manager because his change of system isn't worked. His signings that he's made, I think Masraoui, I thought, still had a decent game. But Zerxa certainly hasn't worked. De Ligt did all right. But it's just not looking good for Eric Ten Hag. And I've been saying it to my mates all week. I'd have actually rather lost something like 5 or 6-1, where at least we put ourselves about showed some effort and desire and just got overrun like we did in the 7-0 back at Anfield where, yes, the mentality went out the window, but at least we were still trying at every single opportunity. Liverpool just played us off the pitch. Like, we still had more possession than them. But it was so comfortable. 
We just didn't look threatening. We created two chances, as far as I'm concerned. The Mazraoui shot through Van Dijk's legs that was well saved by Alisson. That's a half chance at best. We created two chances. Rashford up against Trent, putting those balls in towards Zerxer. And that's not enough to justify Rashford being in the team. It was good play from him, but what else did he do in the 90 minutes? He was allowing Trent to completely roam free in our own half. Meanwhile, Salah and Diaz were tracking back Masraoui and Dallow every time they got forward, whereas Rashford was giving Trent the entire freedom of Old Trafford. So that's not good enough from him. And then when he got on the ball, he didn't do anything outside of those two crosses. And as I've already spoken about, Joshua Zerksa has to do better with those chances. I don't care if it's 3-0. You take those chances. They're both inside the six-yard box. The header is point blank. Head it anywhere else. Head it a little bit up. Head it left, head it right, head it bottom left, head it bottom right, you score. Heads it straight at the goalkeeper. Second one, he's right-footed, he gets there, he makes the run to the back post, and he puts it wide. That's not good enough. For this level, that's not good enough. You've got to take your chances. But that then comes back to my whole point of he's not himself considered an out-and-out -out striker. He sees himself as a nine-and-a-half. Someone that drops off the front, gets on the ball, and looks to bring others into play. That's not what we needed. We've got that. It's called Bruno Fernandes. It's called Mason Mount. It's called Christian Eriksen. Arguably, it was even Scott McTominay, even though we've let him go. But we needed another striker. We needed an out-and-out centre-forward from when Hoyland's not available. And again, I'm not saying we do any better in that game if Hoyland's up front. We'll never know. But Zerxer wasn't up front. He was after we went 3-0 down. That's how he got in those positions. But from those positions, he's not taking the chances. So it's not looking good for him either. And I don't know, like I said, it's just very, very worrying that we look so disjointed. There looks like there's no organisation. Again, it looks like there's no leadership. What was Bruno Fernandes doing? He barely got on the ball. Ryan Gravenberch, in my opinion, was the best player on the pitch. And his job was to stop the ball getting to Bruno and then start building up the attacks. He did that countless times. I thought Ryan Gravenberch was absolutely fantastic for Liverpool today. And I know Diaz got man of the match, and I know Salah almost got man of the match, but for me it was Ryan Gravenberch, because that was the reason Liverpool were able to stop us getting forward, and he was a key reason in that press as to why we were then giving the ball away as well. So, like I said, to me it looks like Eric Ten Hag is sacking himself at this point, because... You know, this Ugart signing's got to work. Because if it doesn't, we're in big doo-doo. We're in big, big doo-doo. Because the fixtures aren't getting any easier anytime soon. I can't remember who we've got next because my, my, my mind is now focused on, obviously, England and the Nations League for the next two weeks. And we'll come back to Manchester United after that's over. And we've got Europa League action coming up as well. But change is needed fast. We've got to get this system working. We've got to get Hoyland fit. We've got to get a left-back fit. Got to get Ugart in the team. We're already three games into the season. We've already lost two. So, I don't know. And what's worse is Liverpool could have had a penalty at the end as well. I think the only reason it wasn't given was because the referee actually signalled advantage to the point where Darwin Nunez has had the shot. So, because the referee has signalled that I've acknowledged there was a foul, but Liverpool have still got a shot away... That's the only reason VAR can't give a penalty. Because honestly, I think that was a penalty as well. And it could have been four. So, disappointment. But, unsurprising disappointment. And that is the worry going forward. That things aren't changing as fast as we thought they would. And Eric Ten Hag has to take the blame. So, am I in the camp of we've made a mistake in keeping him on? Not yet. I always said that he deserved the proper backing for what he achieved. They've done that. They've signed the players he wants. They've got rid of the players he didn't want. They've brought in his backroom staff. So it's now up to him and his players to deliver. So far, his decision-making has not been up to it. And so far, his new signings haven't delivered as much as we thought they would. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching, as always. I'll be back with my next round of reactions, of course, to those England matches next week. I'll see you there.